So, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Hot Topic webinar. It's Wednesday. It's the 19th of January 2021. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here once again. So in the morning, I was already invited to Marcus Morning Show. And uh, probably some of you joined us from there. I registered for today's Hot Topic webinar. And today we want to talk about uh, yeah, a topic I think is very interesting for, for many of us. Um, it's very short-term trading. It's on um, how to break out scalp, in fact, FX markets here. And I want to present you with a basic strategy, one which um, is in fact adopted. It's an intraday trading strategy, um, uh, which is adopted and uh, is very similar um, in its overall structure, let's say, um, um, as the stra as tra strategies I presented recently in the webinars here on the DAX, respectively, on the S&P 500 for US equities. And we want to use, by the way, the S&P 500 breakout approach once again, and uh, use this here as a vehicle to get our way into the FX world. And um, Yes, yes. Um, I, I just, um, that's, uh, that's great. So I can already here write down hello traders. So this is for everyone being here uh, live now. And I would have said, oh, well, if I write hello traders here, this is where you can ask all your questions and um, you already found the chat box. So yeah, um, the recording will be, will be available via YouTube. By the way, um, if you watch now this recording I'm talking about here on YouTube, um, please feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a thumb up here if you have any questions, comments. Um, if you um, want to wanna have a certain topic being covered from us, it's not just from me, but also from Paul or from Marcus, please uh, leave a comment below the video. Let us know. Um, and yeah, so, so that's it around the, the uh, short introduction. Let me share my screen here. I prepared something, certainly, as usual, on uh, this topic, as I already um, said at the beginning. So how professional traders in this case. So in fact, um, we're not just talking here about the strategy I uh, found somewhere and now present to you um, or was trading several years ago. Um, and I'm not trading this anymore, but I'm trading this strategy day in and day out in the FX world. So as of now, by the way, um, so one of, one of the main reasons um, my focus shifted a little over time uh, to F um, 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 uh, US equities, in fact, and, and here discretionary intraday trading um, and, and um, just looking at FX markets, even though this is my, my um, 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 root, in fact, where I come from and where I also uh, made a name in the German trading world, for example, in the FX world, um, I mainly focus here on automated trading strategies because volatility right now is not that great. So it's, um, it's increasing again. And this is one of the reasons why this is a great um, topic for today, because you probably have seen the developments in the yields um, and U.S. yields especially. So um, U.S. yields headed to the highest levels before the, let's call it, corona crash, the pandemic crash in March 2020. So um, we are trading in U.S. Treasury yields at the highest levels since January 2020. This is very interesting because um, the JPY, the currency which is part of this strategy here, um, so the currency pair we'll look at is Euro JPY. JPY is very, very uh, sensitive to developments in the yield world. And yields in general play a very important role in the FX world. And um, that makes perfect sense because if you have high um, interest rates, um, you usually see capital flowing in and out of certain currencies. Um, and thus, this increases the volatility in FX markets. So if you right now see volatility dying out in the FX world, this is due to the fact that yields around the globe are nearly zero. So if there are no so such so so-called and such um, uh, things as yield differentials, you get trouble, in fact, finding um, um, profitable spots here. And that's one of the reasons why my uh, focus here is fully um, 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 automated right now. So using this basic strategy and let my experience then um, 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 flow into these um, um, automated generated trades based on this um, strategy I present to you here, and then um, adapt accordingly. Increase the position size as right now, for example, once I see, okay, I have an edge now because um, yields are rising and, and yield differential play a role again and market participants start to anticipate moves in the one or the other direction and more aggressive breakouts are about to happen wider ranges usually happen and this is then an environment in which you have an edge in, in which you 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 um, can make money capitalize on this edge while the environment with low yields for example and small ranges is not that favorable and this is one of the reasons why here my focus switched a little over the last months but is now coming back to fx and then here um uh, the the 
the, the breakout scalping intraday um, world. So this as a quick introduction here on this to, on today's topic. Before we finally start with today's agenda, um, please let me introduce Admirals to you, Admiral Markets, the broker um, behind all these webinars, making all this possible here um, for you so that, that you can um, 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 use our expertise to let your trading grow. In fact, <clears throat> a broker which is in the business for now, I think 20 years. So they started out in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so there was a rebranding taking place then already in 2020 um, from, um, I'm sorry, 21. So we have 22, 21, a rebranding taking place. Um, so from Admiral Markets over two Admirals, an FX broker with over 8,000 financial offer um, um, instruments being offered here around the globe, fully regulated around the globe, several um, 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 licenses. And um, so this, this rebranding took place because now Admirals is um, not just focusing, not just put this in quotation marks on the world of a brokerage here, but um, also in other financial services um, being offered for clients. For example, you can now have a, a credit card, for example. There's plans in terms of blockchain technology, wallets, for example, um, which are right now not um, um, being found, but which are in the loop. And I can already say that this is another clear sign that there is more to come from Admirals, and this is a, a broker growing um, um, from a brokerage at first in first place to a financial service provider. Then, and um, feel free to reach out to the website admirals.com. Further information is there. Also on the rebranding informations, also um, on Admirals itself, its regular regulatory bodies, um, which are overlooking the business. Feel free to reach out to the uh, customer support if you have any questions. Um, it's um, um yeah high chance in fact that you that you talk to someone in your native language with over um, um um 20 offices around the globe here in this context so that brings us to this slide one world one broker so feel free now to to reach out to the website and now let's jump into today's agenda and have a look here so first of all i want to give you an introduction to uh breakout trading so what is breakout trading respectively what do we need to trade breakouts here um, and then um, we will look at real world examples here and also use the webinars we recently ran here on the DAX respectively on the S&P 500. I will use an example from the S&P 500, but also feel free to check um, uh, the, the recordings here within the YouTube channel on the DAX um, and on the breakout approach there. And so what we then will do is we will adopt the breakout approach, use this knowledge here, um, and then um, present respectively build um, uh, Asia breakout FX trading setup. And um, not just that, but also as in the past, I um, wanna show you some real trading data here in this context. So trade it with my own account. So I'm not talking about numbers. I think from a regulatory as perspective, um, and this is also something we're not allowed to do. But what I wanna do is still, I wanna show you, I'm, I'm trading this. So this is a really forward test. I could also present your back um, 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 test certainly as I did, for example, on the S&P 500 or on the DAX, <clears throat> but in this, special case this is real trading um uh, results from the last uh i think two and a half three years something like that if i if i remember that right um and then i will also give you again an idea on how to optimize the setup so there's some some interesting uh, considerations you can make here uh to to um use a discretionary approach to increase the overall positive, already given positive expectancy of this basic strategy. Um, first of all, based on Dow theory slash um, um, price action reading, but also in addition to that, for example, looking here at, um, uh, what's the word for this? Um, 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 so some, some of you probably have heard about this. This is called bang the close. Uh, this is like uh, when, when, when institutions are um, 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 trading around a certain time, a UK time, then their their FX positions, and then there's a rebalancing. That's what I was looking for. So at the end of each month, you probably see sometimes moves in FX markets on the up and the downside, um, and, and you probably can't explain them. It's just like similar to, to triple witching, for example, and you probably look at the chart just say, well, was there a news hitting the wire or something? Then you look and, and, and search for the news, no news available. What's the reason for this um, jump of, let's say, 50 pips on the upside or um, 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 move on the downside here? What's the reason for that? It could be that portfolio managers are hedging their exposure into the weekly close, and for uh, weekly, monthly close in this case. So, for example, if you've seen them, um, or if you are a portfolio manager, let's put it that way, your portfolio manager 
and you're building positions for clients and um, um, your main focus here, for example, is uh, US equities. Let's say US tech stocks, High, hot right now, so why not? So I'm a portfolio manager trading US tech stocks and you say, well, this guy knows what he's talking about. So I give him my money and I manage the funds and it's sometimes millions, probably sometimes billions of, of USD or in, in, in this case, a currency units, depends on where you come from. Let's assume you're uh, European based. Um, and, and then you give me your euros, but if I want to buy, let's say a Google or a Tesla or an Apple or um, not an Apple, but an Apple share um, or a Microsoft, whatever, Facebook, Meta um, in this context. Um, so then I, I obviously need USD. So I have to exchange the euros into USD to buy the shares. Um, and then I have USD exposure. So I have USD um, um, in my portfolio but my clients, you, are obviously located in Europe. So you pay your bills or you want to get paid out in euros. That means that I have to hatch here this exposure then and have to sell USD and buy euros back. This somehow depends also on my overall global macro outlook. So if I, for example, have um, a high USD exposure, but right now, for example, expect the Fed to um, be very hawkish and, and probably come out very hawkish next week, I have, um, um, I have no real reason to sell USD here and buy euros, but instead keep the USD and exchange this into the monthly close then back into euro after I know in which direction, most likely hawkish direction, the Fed will Will pre present itself or position itself. And this can be used, this knowledge. I mean, obviously, you can see this is a deeper knowledge you have to have about the FX market, but you can use this as a discretionary um, a fundament then to also um, increase the likelihood of your overall basic approach to be even more profitable, increase the position size, trade more aggressively. If you see those capital flows, there's clear signs, for example. So that's just to give you an idea on how to optimize the setup already uh, right here, um, even though today we want to focus here on, in fact, the um, uh, we want to focus on, on, on the technical side, so on price action side. So before we start with everything and come to the Asia breakout system or setup in this case, let's have a look um, at breakout trading in general and give an introduction here on what this is. So a breakout usually occurs when an asset, in our case today, like an FX pair, for example, moves above a resistance level or moves below a support level on increasing volume. This is very interesting right now because um, you can use this, this approach with ranges in every market. Um, and I, I um, motivate you to um, download the demo on admirals.com if you not yet have a demo already, or if you have a live account already, doesn't matter. And um, um, use or have a look at NQ, NQ100, so the NASDAQ 100 CFD in this context. In the daily chart, you will see such a range which um, developed here. And yesterday, we've seen a break on the downside. So last week on Monday, on the spike higher in yields, we've seen um, we've seen um, already an attempt to break lower, then we were bought back, rolled over and pushed again to these levels again. And the question today is, in fact, when using such a range approach, can we close now below or in this um, context, then is it, do you see the attempt to break out of the range lower under increased volume? Because if there's increased volume now on selling pressure, that shows that market participants obviously want to exit the market out of their quite profitable long positions in tech stocks. If we don't get to see this, it was potentially a fake out, which is also interesting because you can use this then if you see a decrease in volume and the market bounces back into the range, that was a potential fake out. And then we're probably about to see a retest at least of the high of the range. So you can use this approach, the knowledge around breakouts, not just to formula trading setups, but also to uh, use it as a general guide on um, where do we stand in the market? What can I do? What can I make out of the price action we get to see right now? So, but coming back now, increased volume. So I'm talking about volume here. I'm talking about, in this case, the Qs respectively NASDAQ. So we have this volume because it's, a, um, it's an exchange or it's a future contract in case of the NASDAQ future. In case of the Qs, it's an ETF, which is traded in a stock exchange. And so this is a centralized place where we have volume. So we know market participants exchanging pieces with each other, and we have this, this, this knowledge here. Um, but 
in case of FX, you probably already know we are talking about an OTC market. Fully OTC, or not fully OTC, this is not right, but um, most of the volume is in fact traded over the counter, which we say. So it's OTC in short, and it's most of, of the volume means 90% plus. So we also have, in case, for example, the Euro FX future, um, um, some volume, but it's it's, it's small. It's really, really small. Most of the deals being made, not just in, 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 in trading itself per, per speculative or, or out of speculative purposes for speculative purposes, but also in the swap markets, all these deals are done sometimes by phone, by the way. So I, I, I pick up the phone, call broker XYZ or trader XYZ at investment bank XYZ and say, hey, I have to hatch 1 billion um, USD. Can you make me a price, please? So I'm not doing this here um, um, via an electronic trading platform as we retail traders used to do that. And that's what I, what I mean by trading OTC. So the deal takes place within the books of bank um, ABC and um, um, bank XYZ, but it's not taking place at the stock exchange itself. And this is a problem. In fact, um, it's a problem because if we do not have this volume, especially as retail traders, well, then we cannot see whether the breakout which occurs is here um, um, taking place under elevated volume or if there's probably a potential for a fake out move. And now the solution here is since we know that elevated volatility usually goes hand in hand with increasing volume, we need to keep in mind to have a min range then, for example, that we want to see to trade breakouts in FX. That's one approach. It's a rough one, but it's one which could be of use in fact. So which means nothing more than um, if let's say the average range um, you can you can see in your charts um, um, then which, which you plan to trade is let's say 25 pips or 30 probably, 30 pips, something like that. And then the range is only 10 pips because there's like a bank holiday or Christmas or New Year's Eve, but markets are still open. Um, then you only have a range of 10 um, um, pips, for example. Well, you take out the order. This is, by the way, exactly what I did last year um, over the Christmas season. So um, I stopped trading at the 22nd of December took out um, my, 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 my trading here and just um, called it the year and then restarted trading at the beginning of January when markets came to live again at the 3rd of January. The interesting thing was that I took uh, notes on um, how I performed by taking out the order. And as I already, as you might have guessed, um, the ranges were very, very tight. So you could look it up in the charts when looking at the FX approach I present to you, very tight range or ranges in general, and the stop out likelihood. So seeing a fake out market ticking here, hitting your entry price, you're in the trade and then getting stopped out. Um, that happened, I've, I haven't counted, but um, it, it was more often than once. It, it was really like, um, I, I have a, it was a very, very um, positive um, uh, solution or not solution, but um, a decision from my end, very positive in terms of existency in this case, in terms of profitability to take out the approach here. Um, and this is, by the way, also an approach how to optimize the strategy. So it's not just that you let the um, EA run here in this case or trade the strategy without second guessing what, what you get to see, but putting it into perspective of what the overall market shows you. But coming back now to trade breakouts then. So to trade breakouts, we first need to identify a range based on a time frame or a clear support. I'm sorry, by the way, there's a U missing. Let me just enter that here. So there we go. So um, so you need um, 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 a range based on a um, time frame you look at then, and then you have to have clear support and resistance areas, which then um, um, which you use to enter trades in this case. And what we also want to do is, and there's something you probably know based on several. Um, um, reads um, that may it be in social media channels um, trading coaches um, you probably have booked in the past reading books or whatever having listened to to other videos on youtube um, you should trade in direction of the overall advantage so and <clears throat> this then in this context is a very crucial part so what i want to do is i want to be long in an uptrend i want to be down uh, or short in a downtrend which means nothing more and I need to have some kind of trend filter. Probably you recall uh, the event on the S&P 500 or on the DAX. Um, we used an EMA here, and we use also an EMA for the FX approach, but it's a different time frame. So <coughs> 
to get an idea of the overall advantage, you should have um, um, an EMA being used in this case. EMA, by the way, you probably also recall a, um, a former webinar we did together. Um, I use EMAs for very short-term trading, so intraday trading. So in my intraday trading, I use EMAs, so exponential moving averages, while when I trade longer-term positions or do longer-term research, like right now, for example, coming back to the NASDAQ again. So we um, 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 attacked the 200 SMA in this context uh, in the daily chart. So why did you say um, 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 SMA in this context? Because it's a simple moving average I use um, based on the fact that it's a longer term um, um, window I'm looking at here. And then um, what I also have, and this is um, great when trading these, these ranges, these, these breakout approaches, you have a clearly defined risk. So you have a level to, level to risk against, we can call this. So which means um, your risk is defined by the width of the range. So if you trade the breakout on, let's say the upside, the, the stop of the range, um, uh, the stop is at the low of the range in this case. So it's the width of the range you use then. And um, we already know um, several um, um, trading ranges here. So the opening range, first 30 to 45 minutes um, in case of the DAX, where um, in case of the, by the way, it's not the DAX 30, but it's the DAX 40, um, or the S&P 500. Or then we also have the Asia range. And this is quite common, in fact. Um, in FX, for example, um, usually you tend to see not that much of volatility during Asian trading hours. So you see usually, especially those pairs um, who have not the JPY um, in it, so no JPY crosses in this case, but even the JPY pairs, you see low volatility and the market really see kind of a channel. And then the market comes to life with London market opening in the morning. And usually based on breakouts out of these ranges then, you get to see um, um, a profitable setup you can capitalize on. And um, so that's around the introduction on breakout trading. Let's have a look here at the opening range in the S&P. We already know um, um, this approach. Again, um, the, the video we did here on, on this topic um, is several weeks ago. I'm not sure. Probably we had one in, in December, if I'm not mistaken. Probably it was last month. But um, however, so what, what we have here is um, the S&P 500 on a 50-minute time frame. And um, what you can see here is these two blue lines. And um, obviously, these two blue lines, these make my open range in this case. So starting at 3.30. So by the way, in five minutes from now, by the way, one second, please. I think I have to, I have to do one thing now. Um, following my daily routine, I have to write down some levels I'm watching today. So I could imagine, by the way, um, one stock to be very interesting. It's called Sophie. Sophie is a, is a meme stock to some extent, let's, let's say. Um, um, it's quite hot right now because um, they are um, um, going after uh, a banking license and um, are very, very um, actively traded right now. And they have an inflection, by the way. So around 11 million pieces. Wow, that's a lot. So 11 million stocks were already traded in the pre-market, by the way. So, um, and then also the queues, uh, the queues. So the ETF on the S&P 5, uh, on, the, on the NASDAQ is also very interesting today. Let me just check out here how actively, yeah, already 1.4 million. Usually you have an average volume in the queues of 50, 51 million. So gapping higher, probably about to bounce a little. Um, it's also very interesting for today. And by the way, also check out gold. So gold could be very interesting for today too. Um, with uh, 1,830. So this is also um, a potential breakout level. So a very strong resistance in the past. We've already broken above. That was in November with uh, inflation data. And then probably you get to see another uh, break higher. Probably this one is a sustainable one. To be honest, I don't like to see the break now because the Fed next week. Um, so um, Marcus will be here covering the event live for you. But, um, um, and, and we'll definitely tell you some details um, around this. But the one thing I don't want to see is now the break higher, because if it happens going hand in hand with the rollover in US 10 year treasury, uh, to US 10 year treasury notes, um, so the yield there, and, and only corrective move because it looks a little extended. The risk is given that we get to see a so-called fake out move so that the breakout is not sustainable here. So this is something to keep in mind when, when, when watching um, these breakouts then. But coming back to the topic. So um, open range between 3.30 and 4.15 p.m. Um, CET in this case, uh, so, so Central European time. Um, 
So what I then look at here is the first 45 minutes of trading, high and low, which we get to see the market is finding a fair value, fair price. And then what I do is, I um, you can already see it here, we have the EMA 10 in this case in the chart. And we say, well, if we get to see a close above um, here on a 50 minute time frame, um, this is, um, so on a 50 minute time frame, this is um, bringing us in the, in the long position if we break out of the range on the upside. Same vice versa, if we break on the downside, um, um, we have to see a close below the EMA 10 here on a 50 minute time frame first. And this is then our entry point into the trade and there's the exit point. So this is an approach um, where we are not working with a take profit level, different to the one in the FX um, world here and the FX approach I, I will present to you. But um, to just give you an idea, you look at the chart, you identify the advantage, you identify a range you can trade on then, um, and breakout, you can, we will trade the break, breakout based on, um, and then you exit given a certain rule, which um, optimizes your overall expectancy, positive expectancy in this approach. And, um, so now let's have a look here at Euro JPY in this case. Um, and you can see the chart looks very similar. Um, very, very similar chart. So by the way, um, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's not an actual chart, by the way. So we are trading similar to this level right now, I think around 130. Um, but the approach is all the time the same. So what you do is you look at the time span between, in fact, 3 to 10 a.m., Central European time. You can already see, by the way, it's not a 50 minute chart as in the SP or in a DAX, a five minute chart, but you have to find um, the time frame here uh, which works best for these breakouts. And um, so, what we do is we, we take an hourly chart. We also have an EMA here. It's the EMA 11, by the way. I will go through step by step these, these key parameters here, but just to give you already an, an, an idea. And um, so what we obviously do is we define the high and low between 3 a.m. and 10 a.m. German time in this case, or Central European time. We place a buy stop if we see a, a closing price above the EMA 11 here. This is where we enter. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's wrong. That way, that way around. So this is where the entry point is, then the breakout. And then um, you see the exit point is here. But when closely watching, you can see that this is not the closing day, um, or it's not it's not the, the 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 close of the trading day in this case. So if you look at the timestamps here at the at the lower part, even though it's not of interest, but we're working with a quantitative approach here, one which gives us an optimal balance between capital growth and equity uh, drawdowns we get to see. And this is, by the way, 1.7 to 1. So um, the risk might be 1R. It's the difference between the high and low of the range. Let's assume it's like 20 pips or so. And then you multiply those 20 pips with 1.7, getting 34. And this is um, these 34 pips are added to the entry point then and where you have to take profit. Um, so... Um, this is like uh, it's really boring to be honest. So it's 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 no it's nothing special. But this is in fact what um, um profitability in trading is about. So it's a very very boring business to be honest. So if you know what you're doing, um, then it's boring. It's just like um, you execute on your predefined plan, on your on your on your game plan. You have clear rules you follow, and you execute on these rules. Um, if there's some kind of nervousness or being excited about a trade or um, 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 being excited not just about getting into the trade, but not really knowing what will happen next, it's a clear sign. It's a clear sign. In my personal opinion, it's a clear sign that you don't know what you're doing. So usually um, this is a sign you're, you're, um, um, you're missing this, this um, uh, sovereignty, let's call it, um, based on the fact that, that you have no clear plan and don't really know what you want to see or what needs to be given to do X, Y, Z. Um, plus, in addition to that, when feeling kind of, let's say, nervous or really excited, this is also a sign that probably the position size is a little too big. So that's also um, um, a, clear in, 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 um, um, a clear hint that something's not right. Usually, you should just execute on your plan. As I do right now, sitting here talking to you, I know that the system already entered the trade and the rest is delivered from markets from the market so the market um, says well we move or we don't move um, um, um you you hit your take profit respectively depending on whether we hit the take profit then it's also um, um, um we we need to see how to manage the trade but this is what we cover in the next slide or we get stopped out but in the long run one stop out doesn't matter because overall the approach is profitable i know this and that's why i can execute without 
hesitation here in this case. So let's have a look here now at the key parameters of this approach. Um, and I call this some um, breakout scalp because scalp trading, in my personal opinion, is very, very short, very, very, I'm sorry, very, very short term. So that means um, uh, you could also call this day trading. Um, I, in my personal opinion, really like short term trading, especially when, when looking here um, for an approach in, in the lower time frame. In this case, it's an MH1, <coughs> but still. Um, I usually refer to this as scalp trading or intraday trading um, 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 maximum then. Um, but it's an approach, again, which is defined with here the Asia range. So it's the highest and lowest value in Euro, Euro JPY between 3 a.m. and 10 a.m. in this context, CET, so Central European time. And then what we do is we identify the advantage based on the H1 EMA 11. So this is already 50% um, um, of the trade, knowing whether to enter a long or a short position. And the EMA is great because it tells you on a very short period of time um, here, EMA 11, um, how to enter the trade, buy stop or sell stop. So if the last H1 candle in this case closed above the EMA 11, then um, if a break out of this range we defined here in the first place happens on the upside, we take the trade. If we close above, but then there's a sharp reversal and we break below the range, we are not um, entering the trade because overall the advantage stays given on the long side as long as we close hourly based on above EMA 11 on H1. Um, the same is true for H1 candle, which closes below here. So then in this context, we only take breaks on the downside of the range. Um, and then also we know which levels to risk against. So we have the stop above respectively below the high low of the range, depending on whether we're entering the market long or short then. And the position works with a predefined risk reward ratio of one to 1.7. So this is some, something I already mentioned. The reason for that, I'm sorry, let me just... So, oh, so there was an arrow missing. Um, uh, the reason for working with such a, um, a predefined risk reward ratio is that um, based on back tests, you can see that the optimal growth. So if you run several simulations with several um, 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 predefined risk reward ratios, we're working here. What you then can find is that the optimal capital growth um, um, in comparison or in relation to equity drawdowns is one to 1.7. That's the reason why we take this. So if you want, you have also a quantitative approach to this. So it's really like you have predefined rules that might change over time. Sometimes there might be market conditions where the market continues to run um, because what we used to see, especially in a um, high yield market environment where high yields put this um, probably a little differently, let's call it an environment in which you have capital inflows and outflows of currencies based on carry trades, or for example, there was usually um, high trend stability in um, FX markets. And this could result in markets really taking on momentum and never looking back, but continuing to rise higher or rise lower. Um, this is also one reason. So yield sensitivity in this context comes into play when it comes to gold, for example. You probably have seen that gold sometimes can really run and continues to run. And there's no looking back, but continuing to run in direction of the trend. No pulling, no pulling, no pulling. Um, and the reason for that is because um, this, this is a big market. And in addition to that, it's very um, yield sensitive then. Um, so coming back now to the environment in which we find ourselves in, using a predefined um, risk reward ratios is uh, favorable in this environment. And um, so overall, you will see that 1.7 to 1 in this context is the optimal, um, 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 it's the optimal um, ratio. So it's, again, a pure intraday trading setup if the trade is triggered but hasn't reached um, the stop and take profit. For example, right now I'm in a position um, and um, neither my stop nor my take profit has been um, hit as of now. Um, and this will not happen into the close um, or till the end of the trading day. Um, I want to make sure that I am don't, I'm not holding a position overnight, even though it doesn't matter because FX markets are open 24-5 in this context. Um, there's no reason um, to be, to be um, 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 yeah, let's say excited or uh, to, 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 to be skeptical that there's kind of a gap or something that could certainly happen if we have a weekend in between. But um, what I still do is I take the trade out on an intraday basis. I'm not holding a position overnight. 
And the next thing is, so this is shortly before US markets close. In this case, it's um, 9.58 German time, CET then. Um, this is two minutes before Wall Street closes. And if the trade isn't triggered at all, uh, this happens also sometimes um, if you have a range which is quite wide because there has been some volatility in Asian markets, for example, and then the market continues to trade within this um, 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 range over the day, but it's not breaking out. It's not happening that often, but it happens. Um, then we take out the order at 9 p.m. Um, CET. Why 9 p.m. CET? Because we have to find an advantage. Remember that. So we have to find an advantage. And the last close here, uh, the last closing price we can use as a reference um, before we close the order is some two minutes before US markets close. And that's why we have to take out the order then at the last hourly close, which is 9 p.m. Central European time. And um, so yeah, that's it on the on this setup. Now you want to know, does the setup really work in the real trading world? So is it, is it, is it truly a, a profitable system? And um, it is. I, so I just realized I don't have an equity. I don't have an equity curve within that. A little unfortunate. <laughs> okay, so um, forward testing. These numbers are derived, in fact, um, uh, from from a from an account um, um, or a, a account. Um, <coughs> what's a better word for this? The account is connected to an external software. I, I prefer to use um, FX Blue here. You probably have heard about FX Blue and using that um, um, from from Marcus using that, and and it's a very great tool because you have plenty of data available there. Um, the thing is now, now you might wonder, hey, why don't you, why don't you show us the, the chart? <laughs> Very simple, because I'm not only trading this strategy, but also other macro um, strategies within that account. So it's um, not really giving you any insights on how profitable the setup itself is. You can, you can already see here, it's a close call right now. No big surprise. Oh, by the way, here's the time span. Um, it's a no, no big surprise because this time span hasn't been of high volatility, especially intraday when it came to FX moves. Um, and so it's it's very close to um, 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 plus minus zero. So I'm slightly positive with this approach after commissions. And so we need to adapt um, um, from a discretionary perspective, which is then giving me a, a, a true edge then. But running this setup itself, um, based on how I traded, um, you have a number of trades here. You can see 855. So um, each day a trade, if you have 250 trading days, you can see it nearly three years. Yeah. Three years, 250 times three, 750, another 100. And then you're um, coming close here to, to 855. <clears throat> hit rate of 45%. Once I took this um, screenshot here was at the beginning of December. Right now, the hit rate increased a little. So um, it's um, greater 46% now. So um, um, overall, this, this would have probably traded around 45% if I hadn't taken out um, uh, the, the um, strategy around Christmas, respectively around Christmas Eve. So this is then where the discretionary approach comes into play. You might, if you run this now with a back test based on an um, EA you built yourself, you might come up, probably see different data here, but this is based on the fact that I'm discretionary intervening into the strategy um, to further smoothen the equity curve and increase the overall expectancy of the approach. Um, the payoff ratio now also increased to 1.5 um, here in this context. So overall, the strategy became in this, in its version as I traded more profitable. Um, Interesting also consecutive wins, consecutive loses, 10-10. Um, why do I mention this? I mean, this is just a side info, let's say, but it's an info which is of importance because just imagine now um, you say, Jens, this sounds great. Show us how to trade this in the real world. And then uh, you invite me, let's say to market show and I trade the approach. Um, it could be uh, that after entering 10 trades, we are facing 10 losses. So this happens. It's, it doesn't need to be um, um, as worse as that or as bad as that um, in this case. So with 10 losses in a row, but probably five losses could be. And I mentioned that because there was um, a, um, an event I had years ago, something like four or five years ago. So, um, and I was invited to trade the US market opening and I traded the S&P opening. And also here we have uh, consecutive losses in this range. And then we only have the event one day a week. Um, and so exactly that day, two weeks or three weeks a row in a row, um, there was a losing trade. Even though we were ahead after three weeks, people thought that strategy does not work, which makes perfect sense because what they see is what they believe. Um, 
and without having this data here, uh, this is this is um, a very very difficult to 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 believe that the strategy is profitable. Respectively, in addition to that, also important, um, this is also giving you um, um, a good anchor when it comes to psychological stability in your trading. Because if you know that you will face ten losing trades in a row, you don't start to second guess the strategy or um, doubt your ability as a trader um, after having let's say three or four losses. It's just part of the game. It's just statistically proven that you need to have these losses. On the other hand, you also will see four gains um, um, and consecutive wins trades, winning trades then in this context. Um, still, this is not saying that you're the next market wizard, but it's statistically given that this will happen over time. So getting an insight, and this is um, where it all comes down to, and uh, the, why, why I mentioned that is um, you have to document your trading. If you do this, you have an edge um, right from the start compared to, let's say, over 90% of all the other traders out there. Um, because mental stability will come all, uh, based most of the time here out of this, 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 this aspect that you know what to expect from your strategy. And that's why it's so important to have this, um, um, uh, these invaluable statistical insights into your trading. Um, and now come here to some ideas on how to optimize. I, I already mentioned that at the beginning. One is, for example, this, this FX rebalancing idea. So knowing um, um, how portfolio managers manage the positions, for example. There's also an idea on how to do that. Let me just, by the way, here also. So um, change this. Yeah, perfect. So um, first of all, I already said it at the beginning. Um, we have the breakout of the Asia range. It's an FX setup. We don't have volume there, so I want to be. Um, um, I want to. I want to be sure that that there's enough volatility in the market. That means there's one way <coughs> to get this step by saying, let's say the Asia trading range I'm looking at here needs to be greater um, or equals 0.2 percent of the currency pair, in this case, Euro JPY. So that means if Euro JPY trades at 132.15, for example, so then the range should be 27 pips at least. If it isn't, you don't take the trade. Um, in case, when it comes to breakout trading, so this is something which is not of interest now for FX trading, but something probably um, um, you will come across. You, you look at this and say, yeah, FX is interesting, but most of the time I'm trading equity markets or um, indices, for example, futures. So uh, that, that then might bring you to the question, the, the simple question, in fact, on um, what, what can I do here to improve the overall profitability of um, such an, um, a breakout system for equity markets? If I trade this, let's say, in blue chips and, and US equities or something like that, then um, we, we could say that we want to see the R vol, the relative volume, being above a certain threshold, let's say at least two to one, for example. What does this mean? It means you have, let's say, for time span between, let's say, 330 to 340, you have usually 10 million shares traded. And then you see that day um, within that time span that 20 million shares are traded. So this is uncommon because average, uh, on average, you see 10 million shares being traded. So you can get this data. Um, but again, if 20 million shares are traded, then obviously there's something going on for whatever reason, that may be um, an earnings report or report on, I don't know, um, SEC is, is um, I'm paying close attention to the, the company because of this and that um, rumor or some whatever. So if our vol is elevated, chances that a breakout will be profitable are elevated. So it's higher than, than usual. And this is also something um, that, that you should keep an eye on. And in terms of finding the overall advantage, then we could also look at the dominating time frame, for example. This is some approach in our case when looking at the H1, we look at the daily chart. Um, and what we usually do then is we look at the accumulation or distribution area. Um, so really, some of you probably have heard about this in, in Marcus webinars. Um, and what we what we could do then is um, set very roughly. Once we trade in the accumulation area, then we trade very aggressively in direction of the trend. While if we trade in the distribution area, then if we trade at all, here we trade conservatively in direction of the identified advantage. To, to get a better idea of what I'm talking about here, um, let's have a look at, at, at the uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. And now assume that the range we identify, if this is H1, um, is now here, I'm sorry, it's D1, it's daily, it's a daily chart. And then um, we, we're trading somewhere here. So in the accumulation area, so we are about to um, um, 
take back momentum on and going for an attempt here to, to attack, probably penetrate the recent highs. So interesting thing now is if we trade here, then um, you identify the range and you get a long signal, you probably trade it more aggressively then you would take the trade if you trade the trade, take the trade long at all, if we trade here, because we are already very, very extended. So if the signal um, occurs somewhere here, then you're probably um, taking the position size down, which is also adding, while the strategy stays profitable, um, this also adds to the overall profitability and, and then smoothens the equity curve, especially. Once you take this, this um, approach here, accumulation area, distribution area into account. And um, that brings us to today's summary. So a breakout occurs when an asset like an FX pair moves above a certain a level, a resistance level or um, a support level here on increasing volume. The problem in FX is that we do not have this volume. It's a mainly ODC traded product. So over the counter traded product, we don't have a centralized exchange, for example, where we have a clear idea on how much volume was traded on a certain um, um, bar or on, at a certain time. And the solution here is then we know <coughs> that elevated volatility usually goes hand in hand with increasing volume. Um, so what we need to keep in mind is that we have a min range here so that, that we increase the chances of a breakout. And um, in addition to that, um, and we can also use the overall idea on what I what I what I what I um, 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 presented um, a few seconds ago here on the accumulation and the distribution area, which can help to improve smooth the equity curve when it comes to trade breakouts. And then again here, I'm coming back to Euro JPY and why especially I prefer trading these breakouts in Euro JPY. Um, it's uh, in fact um, uh, interesting because it's highly positively correlated to two yields based on the JPY and um, is not as deep or um, um, wide or there's not so much market breadth, let's say. It's very liquid, certainly. It's an FX pair, um, but it's not as liquid as USD JPY, for example. That's one of the reasons why trends usually um, also tend to trend longer respectively there might be kind of an overshoot which will then bring you here um, in, a, in a very favorable position once trading in direction of the overall identified advantage so that's why euro jpy is very interesting let's finish with the contact details from uh, atmos for further information please check out um, not just um, here the chances uh, to to reach out the, the customer support via email but also check out the website if you have any questions you will probably find the answers already there um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you um, like what you just see, uh, what you've just witnessed. Um, um, set a reminder that you don't miss any of the videos which we are producing here, Paul, uh, Marcus, and I. Next week on Friday, um, we will talk. This will be on, on this week on Friday, so the 21st. I'm sorry. Um, Marcus, um, um, Paul, and I will discuss our outlook for 21. So uh, at 22, by the way, it's already 22. So um, please check the website for the uh, registration um, 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 link there for the webinar. And um, fully regulated broker. So here's the risk disclaimer. Uh, trade safe and um, read carefully. We talk again on Friday, 21st of um, January 22, together with Paul and Marcus. I really look forward to it. I wish you happy trading. All the best. See you. See you on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.